Hey guys and welcome to a different sort of video. In this video we're going to be showing off one of my latest achievements, which is getting a Minecraft server to run on the PSP itself. This is going to be basically the external part of the internal server, I'll explain that a little bit later, but this is going to be the main thing which actually shows us uh, doing the internal server of Minecraft for the PSP. So right now, obviously, we're just doing an external server test. So we're testing between the PlayStation Portable and a Minecraft Java Edition client. The Java Edition client is going to be connecting to the PSP, which is down there, and it's going to be connecting to my personal server, which I'm calling the Craft Server. Uh, there's going to be a link in the description that will take you to the GitHub repository. Right now, it's in a very early stage, and you're not going to be able to go much further than getting it to uh, go to the quote-unquote logging in screen. But without further ado, this video took a lot of time and effort to set up, so I would really appreciate it if you could go down there, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of whenever I'm basically going to be uploading any more videos like this. <laughs> So going ahead and looking at the server here, obviously this is the Java Edition client and it cannot connect right now because the server is neither connected to the internet nor on. Uh, that will all change though when I start the server down here, which is going to be craft server and it's going to ask me for an internet connection, which I will provide. Okay, it's going to uh, basically do its initialization step here, socket created, socket uh, bound, and it's listening on the socket. So it's listening for any network requests from uh, the Java Edition client. If I hit refresh here, it's going to be able to synchronize over here. So it should, yep, it got a connection. And then on the connection here, it says PSP server, definitely not a PSP. Definitely not a PSP. <laughs> Either way. Uh, it's only going to be able for to support one person, which is pretty much going to be uh, what you would expect. Uh, I want to do in the future doing some more things like uh, up to like four players or something like that. I'm not sure. In the background here, I have my little code base, which is like some several thousand lines. Uh, right now, uh, we've got the main connection portion. So if I go ahead and connect here, it's going to go up over here. It's going to listen and try to find a connection. Uh, that it connects, it's going to say uh, I'm attempting to join, uh, sending a packet with ID2, that's going to trigger the login screen. After that, we're actually switching to the play state, but there's really nothing in the play state yet. Uh, that's really noteworthy, so I'm not going to be actually going past that. But this really starts to factor into the overall server design of the uh, overall program architecture. So in multiplayer games, we have a client and a server. A full client is connected to a full server over a network. Let's break down how Minecraft does this. Minecraft single player has an internal client. This stuff sort of handles video, displaying stuff to your screen, playing sounds, and reacting to input. On the other hand, Minecraft single player also has an internal server, which does the game's logic, chunk generation, and a lot more. The two communicate over a total event bus to drive some changes and basically to communicate to one another. Minecraft multiplayer is pretty similar in concept as you have your internal client and your internal server, which are both uh, wrapped by an external client and an external server. The external client and server are sort of the network side of things uh, and the two still communicate by an event bus, but the external client and external server have to communicate by wrapping this event data over to the network using certain packets. This is the concept of how the overall game works. So right now let's look at MCPSP. Right now we have an internal client that works pretty well in hardware. We have an external client which sort of works in the way we want. And we also now have an external server which is working towards the end stage of development. Finally, we don't have any sort of internal server, and this is really where we're at now. This is what really needs to be done. So we want to develop the two up. We currently have events via Stardust event bust and packets by Stardust's network driver. So where should we go from here? The general order of things is to build the internal server architecture first. The external server is almost basically complete, and it just really needs a few more packet handlers on the sort of play side. 
The external client needs to do some reworking to play nice with Stardust, but ultimately should be pretty doable. And finally, the internal client will be need to be fleshed out some more with more models and stuff like that. All this really needs to be done by version 1.0. Starting with the timelines, the external is basically nearly completed and should be ready by the start of next week if not by the end of this week. The external client should take about two weeks to complete as there's a little bit more to conform with uh, as we already have an existing server and I want to be compatible with uh, vanilla servers. The internal client on the other hand will take about a month or two to bring up to speed uh, with enemies, models, more things like that, especially loading, memory management, and a lot more. The big sort of objective in the room is the internal server, which I estimate might take about three or four months of work to get completed. This all adds up, however, to bring us to our December 25th deadline, and this is what I will be working on and showing off in the next few weeks and the months ahead. So right now we're really at a pivotal moment, uh, but I hope you guys have really sort of enjoyed the video. Uh, in the links below, you're going to also be able to notice that I have a GitHub repository link, which is going to be there for basically if you want to download and try this yourself. Note that it's very incomplete right now, and you won't be able to get much past the logging in screen. So I want to thank you guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.